And as my mate used to say, he used to talk about, you know, people making, you know, armor and stuff like that back in the day. And they, they didn't have, they did it all by hand. Or uh, Conan the Barbarian going around the block in it. Last week we were looking at these, weren't we? Which was where I started that carving, wasn't I? Carving that former up, which is that. That's the former, which I was working on last week. And I've made one. You just have to go from that, two bits of those, to that. So that's a lot of effort. That's actually quite a difficult job, but it, it's, it's, it's all right. I'm, we've got to make another one. This is a former to help the aiding of making it. It's, it's, I can't form all of it round it, but I can do something with it. So we've got to sort of make that go over there to give us two halves of this. So you can see that sort of puckered up there like that, which this one is. So it's slightly intentional. I, I did actually think, well, if we, if we do get one of those sort of puckers in there, it, it does actually, it works quite well in situ because you won't see this that well. It will all be covered in sort of a, a black bitumen type um, finish an under seal effectively. I use that black rubberized stuff that you've probably seen on the other films that I've used before. So of course it will cover up a lot of this uh, and we'll, you know, we'll see the seams, we'll see them there and you'll see this bit of puckering in there. So I think that will work quite nicely. I think that'll, that'll, that'll be a nice job. So I'm quite pleased with that. I think that'll be okay. And we've effectively got to get this shape round here or if you imagine we've got to sort of, you know, pull that in, in round. So when these were made new, you'd probably have some press tooling. So you'd have a, you'd have a thing like that and it'd go, you know, so that's a male and then it'd go into sort of a female die and it'd push it in, you know, and you'd, you'd, you'd put that in a big press and it'd stamp it in, which is great if you've got one and you've got the tooling. Well, you know, this is already a bit elaborate going this far just for making two of those. But, you know, I want to get them as good as I can get them. And that's the way I thought was the best thing to do to make some sort of tooling up. Um, but yeah, you're not going to the extent of using a press, are you? It'd be, it'd be way over the top. We've got a sharp edge on the end of here, which I think we'll get rid of. We'll, we'll, we'll take that bit out. Let's do that first. We'll take a lot more of this off as we go, but let's just start with a small bit. I reckon we can take a bit more than that. Let's do that. Let's take that much off. Place to be decisive, doesn't it? <laughs> right there go. No. Otherwise we'll have that sharp bit stick it out and then we shrink a lot of this. We're asking quite a lot of this bit of metal. Pressing it in, it would, it would, it would stretch that area there because it would put a sort of dent in there and then it will pull this up and it will shrink this in. So this all will have to sort of come up and it will all pucker up around there and around here and then it will all shrink in. So that, so when I mean shrink, you know, you're physically sort of forcing the metal together. So effectively it gets thicker. So, you, you know, that's what you're doing. You're doing that. So that, that's it there. So it's not all stretching because if you just stretched it, you'd end up with it just so thin it would split. So you've got to shrink this into, into here. So you've got to grab a lot of metal and pull it together, which is a lot of effort. I think what we'll do, we'll start with a mallet on the sandbag and we'll, we'll, we'll run through that area there and try and pull this back over. And then we might use this little, this little tweaking tool to, to tweak it a bit as we go to start puckering it up and then we can then we can sort of shrink it with a hammer over this 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 dolly here right so we use it on this sandbag here the sandbag there that's it on a nice bit of oak we use a sort of egg mallet for doing that with Right, so you can see we're getting the beginnings of the shape. You can see how it's puckering up like that.
Go and have a look at the, the former, see roughly what we got. That sort of follows it there, doesn't it? So we're sort of pulling this up around here, effectively like it's a, you know, we're trying to mimic what the press is going to do when it press it in. So that's what we've got to do. So we've got to put all this round up here and we've got to shrink all this in as we go. So we could, we could use one of these to tweak it a bit. And then we've got to flatten these things out. So you've got to get that down in there and then twist it round a bit to do that. Right, so we've got the beginnings of it like that, going in, you know, sort of shrinking it around like that. So what we'll do, we'll put it on here for a bit, and we'll try and um, pull some of these in to shrink them in a bit. So you've got, we've got loads to go yet, haven't you? But you can get the idea. You can sort of imagine that being pushed in and then it'd be it, it'd sort of push that down there and it pull this up in and as it pulls it in it'd have to shrink it all wouldn't it now if we had a, if we had a steel form we could try and knock it around it a bit um which we can do a bit with this but we you know we've got to really do it off of this you know we can't use this for hitting on too much because it'll it'll end up denting it all up and that's you know that, that's the sort of beginnings of it you see so <laughs> Yeah, you see what we're trying to do. It's, it's, it's a long way from that to that. So, you know, what we could do, we could clamp this to the bench and we could sort of try forming this up over there a bit. Yeah, you know, it's one thing we could do. Um, you know, that, that could work, but it's gonna pucker up loads. But, you know, we, gotta, we, we, we know that anyway. So just for the sake of it, we'll, um, we'll try doing that a bit, try and knock it over a bit and see what we got see if that sort of works towards what we're doing. Um, now we've allowed excess here, so if this comes up here, you know, so it comes up to that level, we've got enough to then give, give us extra to then do this fold and so on. It's got a lot extra, so it'd sort of come down here and then have enough for a fold. So, you know, because we, we, we'll probably end up cutting a lot of this off, this excess, because it'll all be puckered up and quite thick and, and overworked. But you know, it's what we do, it's what we're trying to do. A lot of effort doing this this way. It's not the best way of doing it. Um, pressing it would be the best way of doing it. But obviously, you know, we haven't got that opportunity. And as I quite often say, these things were all built with press tooling, but then hand assembled at the Pinafrina factory. Uh, whereas the Maseratis and other things were hand formed. So, you know, when you're hand forming things, which is this, this is hand forming, you try and find the most efficient way of building something. So when, when they're built like that, so when you look at the sort of 50s cars and they're more rounded and so on, you, you can see, you know, that's because that's an easy way to build it effectively. So replicating stuff like this is very difficult because they're using press tooling. So they can do a lot more with press tooling than we can by hand and a lot quicker, obviously. Well, obviously quicker, um, but you've got to build the press tooling. You've got to have a factory to, with the press in it to build it. And the presses they use for these is, as big as this building, they're massive things. Um, so yeah, it, it's not what we've got the you know facilities to do. And even people that are reproducing panels with presses, which you can get E-type bonnets pressed out now, and Motor Heritage are doing a load of stuff. You know, there's loads of things out there that are being done that way. Um, but you know, that's an economy of scale. That's just something like an E-type that they made thousands of. You know, you've got to remember they only made 850 of these. And these, these things are only on the spiders. Now, yes, they were on the two litre spider, which they made 1500 of. So yeah, 2000 of them in, in total. It's not a big survival rate, but of all the things that rust out on them, <laughs> these don't. So they're normally, these are in good shape. As you can see, this, these are in good shape because that's the one that come off this. Um, so you don't really need, you don't need these normally. It's just because they were taken out on that car that we're doing on the German car. They were deleted in, in some sort of restoration work or whatever it was they were doing. They got rid of them. So there's not gonna be much call for them. It's probably the only set I'll ever have to make. It's probably the only set needed in the world. You know? So we're not gonna, you know, this is the most efficient way in light of that. 
to, to make things as quick as you can. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clamp it down here and we'll try a different thing. We'll try pulling it round onto it a bit and see, see what sort of results we can get from doing that. Um, it might not, as I say, it's not necessarily the best way of doing things, but it, it could sort of serve to illustrate my point about pressing things. And it might also just be, well, it could be useful just for the sake of the film to see what happens if we try and do it this way. Um, you know, how much we can gain by, in, in this manner, what it will give us. So yeah, so that's sort of pulled down there. If I lean on it whilst I do it, like a big mallet, <laughs> like one of them is from the fair, isn't it? <laughs> Test your strength. Um, yeah, it's, um, I sort of bought it half as a joke, but it actually does, it has proved quite useful. See what I mean about trying to pucker up, and it's also when you hit it there, it's going out there, so it shows how much it'll move around. But what we might do is try a bit more of this thing, see if we can't gain a bit with this, and then shrink it down. I mean, the best thing to do with this would be if you had a, a sort of power hammer um, with a shrinker attachment on it, and you could feed it into it, or an echo machine, you know, and, and shrink it all in, sort of thing. But that, you know, that's a power tool. I haven't got that, so we've got to do it the manual way. And as my mate used to say, he used to talk about, you know, people making, you know, armour and stuff like that back in the day, and they, they didn't have, <laughs> they did it all by hand. Although I suspect they had a power hammer for doing some of it. You know, they did, they did have a, you know, they could, they could have, you know, blacksmiths had power hammers from a long time ago. You know, uh, you know, run by a, off a water wheel or a donkey running around or something like that or uh, Conan the Barbarian going around the block in it. <laughs> um. Yeah, so flattening these out, obviously I don't want to fold that over on itself. I've got to be careful not to, you know, hit, if I hit that and then it folds up, it will end up folding over on itself. That's not what I'm trying to achieve, is it? You know, we're trying to shrink the metal together. So it's a tall order to do it because we've got to move a lot of metal. You know, so it's, 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 it's quite a big thing, but you can see, you know, you can see what we're trying to do. You can see how much we've got to get that round there. So that is quite a lot, but if I, I'll try and shrink this down a bit. But so I don't want to end up folding over on itself. Got to be careful with that, not to sort of fold it over on itself. Um, Otherwise, we will end up with a problem. So I'll just try and get... Yeah, so you see I've sort of done, I've straightened out a bit. Otherwise, as I say, it'll end up folding over on itself and that'll be no use at all. That wouldn't be any good to us. So let's just try shrinking some of these in. The reason I'm sort of holding it between my stomach and here is to try and pull it together like that. And of course, I ain't got three hands, so. Otherwise, if I hit it, it'll just, you know, you can see how it's trying to do that. So I've got to try and pull it in as I go, which isn't, you know, I can only do a bit of that. So we're starting to pull that round a bit. You see, so what we could do, we can trim a bit of this off. So yeah, if you see, we can sort of just take that off of there, couldn't we? So uh, I'll do a bit more. We started with a flat sheet, didn't we? We got somewhere already. Um, and I've just got to keep working that and working that and trying to pull this in. Um, on the sandbag, use this a bit, use that one. I could do with the more rounded one, um, you know, something almost like a ball, not quite a ball, but you know, something that follow that contour more. But anyway, that's something, you know, that's it. Um, I'm gonna keep working on this, because you know, you, you <laughs> it's not something you wanna sit through. 
uh, seeing all that happen. Um, you know, and we can only do so much tonight anyway, but it's a start and we'll um, perhaps we'll come back to it next week. Look, you know, that and some other things. We should do a film about Padova, about, about some of the sights and sounds of Padova. To, to, um, so in view of that, I need a little workshop van and I found a darling little van out there. So, uh, um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, cost nearly as much as my house, but <laughs> so <laughs> it, it stayed out there. But one day, one day, I would, I'd love one of these. So you have a look at this footage of this little, um, little Fiat 600 based uh, van, which is, um, you'll see the front end is Fiat Multipler and the back end is like a proper van. They're, they're, they're extremely rare, very collectible. Um, and you know, you know, the, the little multiples are cool, but this is, this is, you know, cooler than a multiple. Really would like one of these, but, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, wanting and having have always been <laughs> quite different things, haven't they? So, um, there we are. All we've got to do is do that, isn't it? And then that'll be done, won't it? So come back next week and you can have a look at that. Yeah, I'll be deaf and you'll be bored. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>